of our mentality, the works of what we desire, are seen, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, under which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That is what we do. So after you've done one or some of these things, then what do you do after that? It is time for repentance. It's time to get back into God. And how do we do that other than asking His forgiveness? You see, God does not accept these things. And if we want to be the best that we can be, then we can't do those things. So you see, these are the things that we have to be aware of in our walk with Christ. To be like Jesus, we have to walk above the fray. We have to walk outside of the things that are displeasing to God. So, what do we do? We repent. We pray and ask for forgiveness. And then we decide not to do that anymore. You see, we have to decide to be the best that we can be. And when I started out, I don't think I said we should try to be the best that we can be. We should decide. We should make that decision. And when we make that decision, that means that there is something that we have decided to do. Now, how long it takes us to do it is up to us because some of us are quick learners and some of you are like me. You know, it takes a long time to get it. So you, so you keep going back and forth. But you're still on your way. And trust me, you will never get it all anyway. You'll never get it all. But it is your purpose in God's grace to strive towards righteousness. Strive towards righteousness. That is our purpose. And this is why I say, when we make New Year's resolutions, what we do is we tend to say, well, I failed. I quit. I'm no good. And that's never what God would say to you. God says, I don't like any of those things that you did, but you know what he says after that? He says, I still love you. I don't like none of the things that you did, but I love you anyway. And as long as there's breath in your body, there is a chance for you to change. Yes. That's what God says about you. That there is a chance for you to change. Because you're in His image and in His likeness. Remember, I am in His image and in His likeness. He is superior and I am submissive. He's superior. I am submissive. Not my way, but His way. Yes. I don't do the things my way. I do them His way. He's superior. I'm submissive. And since we're talking about being the best that you can be, we have to go where that takes us. So, women, if you're married, submit to your husband. Children, submit to your parents. Employees, submit to your employer. That, that's just the way it is, ladies. If you're married, you are not in a partnership. There is a hierarchy. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All of them are one. All of them have the same power. All of them have the same authority. But God is the head, the Father. Amen. Is the head. <coughs> Remember when we started out reading, it says, and God created man. And he created him in his image. And then he made him male and female. He always puts the man first because that's the hierarchy. And it doesn't mean that anybody is better than anybody else. It just means that somebody has to be the head. 
Because if, if everybody gets the last word, then you got chaos. We know about that. And the Bible instructs us as Christians to obey the government and to pray for our leaders. Now that takes discipline and, and, and a, a lot of concentration, especially when you think the government is oppressing you or your leaders is not doing anything that you like or he's going against everything that you believe. But if that's what God's want, then pray for yourself, swallow hard, and then obey the government and pray for your leader. That, that's the rule because there has to be hierarchy. There has to be someone who is making the final decision. And this is how we get to be the best that we can be. It is not like laid out and say, well, I'm going to go get saved in church today and everything is going to be all right for the rest of my life. No. He made you in His image and in His likeness so you get to choose. And if you want to be the best that you can be, then you will follow in His footsteps and do what He says. And that will get you to the place that you want to be. So we have to consider and think that there is hierarchy. There is a submissive and there is a superior. And the superior has the responsibility of making sure that he supplies the submissive with all of the things that would keep them safe or that would keep them healthier, that would keep them whole, that would keep them in a position to survive this life. These are the things that is important in our walk with Christ is that we learn to be submissive. And if you can't be submissive on earth, then where do you go from there? God don't want you in heaven if you can't listen down here. He says, it is what he says that unless you enter the kingdom as a little child, you will in no Otherwise, enter. You can't come in. You have to be submissive. So you see, he gives us the plan so that we can work on it. So when we get to where he is, then we've already got it. And this is why we have to listen to him because he's always going to tell us the right things to do. Amen. So learn your place. Learn your place. And your place is to be where God wants you to be. Wherever that place is. If you are a doctor, then that's your place. You help people all you can, but you help them through the grace and the power of God. Yes, yes, yes. If you are a housewife, then that's where God wants you to be. To make sure that your family is well taken care of and that, that you presentable or present yourself to your husband when he comes home as best you can be. If both of you go to work then you are to be the best you can be at work and give the person that you work for a complete eight hour day. Of course, you're going to get your 15 minute breaks and your half an hour for lunch and so forth. But you do everything according to the book because you're not working for the man. You're working for God. Yes. If you can't be honest and upright on earth, then God says there's no place for you in the kingdom. And this is why when we make these resolutions, we put ourselves down and then we don't feel like we're worth anything. So why should we be good? Why should we try anything else? I couldn't even keep the New Year's resolution. There's a lot of things that you can do other than try to keep a resolution that you made off the top of your head. And me, I looked at stats every now and then. I looked at the, the New Year's resolutions from 1945 until today. And most of the stuff that people made resolutions on back then, they're still making resolutions on now. But they're changing positions. They gave them one to ten. Religion. 
and going to church was number six back then. Now it's not even on the list. I mean, it, it tapered off, tapered off. Now going to church ain't even on the list of, of your New Year's resolution. People said, I'm going to get more religion and go to church more often. It was number six in 45. In 2021, it ain't on the list. Does that tell you? You see, so obey the government, pray for your leaders, but when they go against God, then you don't have to obey no more. You don't obey anything that goes against God. So you see, it is up to you to be the best that you can be. So you have to choose those things. You have to choose. And ladies, again, if your husband hit you upside the head with a stick or his fist, that's not love. Run. That's war. If he curses you or yells at you or acts a nut, then you forgive him. You forgive him because he's being controlled by the enemy. And understand, I said controlled by the enemy. The stick in the fist guy, he's possessed. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy, the guy who's just cursing and yelling, he's being controlled by the enemy, and we know what that is, right? The enemy comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's not our image, and that's not the image that we want to associate or be with. So we are to separate ourselves from from that image, because yes. that is not ours. But most of us, you know, we don't even go there. We don't even think in those terms. We don't even consider being the best that we can be, because we think we pretty much got it made. You know, I'm a good person, and that's where we go. I'm a good person. So, I, you know, I don't have to think about that. If you want to talk to somebody about being the best they can be, you know, talk to other people. So I'm, good. I'm a good guy. I'm, I'm all right. But that's not the criteria. There's no word in the word where it tells us that we need to be a good person because we can't be good people. In, in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, beginning around verse 16, 15 or 16, if you read from there backwards down, you will see that you have to rethink that anyway because there's a young man, the story goes, Rich young ruler, they call him. He runs to Jesus and he says, what do I need to do to be the best that I can be or to get eternal life? He said. And Jesus stops him right away because the first thing out of his mouth is good master. Hey, good master, what do I have to do to be the best that I can be? And Jesus says, why are you calling me good? There's only one good and that is God. Only one good, and that is God. He said, but if you want to be the best you can be, you want to be eternal life, then keep my commandments. And the man said, which one? He said, you should not kill, you should not steal, you should not commit adultery, you should not lie and honor your father and your mother, and then he throws in for good measure is to love your neighbor as yourself. And the man <coughs> said, I'm a good person. I've been doing all of that ever since I was a little boy. I've been doing all of that. What else do I need to do? What else you got? And Jesus said, go and sell all the stuff you got. Give the money to the poor, and then come and follow me. And the Bible says that the man went away sad. And you say, well, he went away sad. But you see, he went away sad because it says that he had a lot of stuff. So he wasn't willing to get rid of his stuff. Now, what did you have that you're not willing to get rid of so that you can follow Jesus? That is the moral of the story. You see, the man didn't do any of the things that we read about in, in uh, Galatians. All of those things that the flesh causes you to do. 
He said he hadn't done none of those things. He said he had not lied. He had not stolen. He had not committed adultery. He had not committed murder. And he had honored his mother and his father. And that he had kind of loved his neighbors as he did himself. But you see, he missed the most important point as to where we started out. Who are we and how can we be the best that we can be? And the general consensus is that we should walk in the footsteps of God and obey His Word. So you see, the, the man had a lot of stuff, but he was not following in the footsteps of God, nor was he listening to God's Word. Because Jesus just told him what he needed to do. Go get rid of your stuff. And come and follow me. And the man said, no, no, no. Jesus didn't want the man poor. Please don't believe that just because he told him to go sell his stuff, that he wanted, oh, you got to be poor to follow me. That's not what he's saying here. He is saying that if you got some stuff with you that you can't bring along with me. You and the stuff together can't be with me. You can be with me with the good stuff you got, but you can't be with me with some of the stuff you got. You see, you got some stuff that you can't be with Jesus with. And it doesn't mean that you are lying and cheating and stealing and all of that. You got some relatives that you can't go to Jesus with. You can't bring them with you. Because you'll hear people tell you a lot of times, oh, blood is thicker than water, honey. And everybody knows that. If you ever seen blood and water, you know that blood is thicker than water. But that's not what they're trying to tell you. They're trying to tell you that my family comes first and anything else is after that. And you see, if that is your deal, then you can't follow Jesus with that because some of your family can't go with you to Jesus. So you see, these are the things that we have to understand that lying and stealing and cheating and all of that, that is not the answer. Oh, I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't steal, I'm a good person. But you still have some baggage that Jesus does not want in his presence that you can't bring with you. So that's where we have to come down to what did Jesus say? Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my sister? Who are my brothers? And then he explained, those who do the will of my father, those are my mother and my brother and my sister. So you see, He's not concerned with biological relationships. He's concerned with the word and the worship and the following of the gospel. And when you have that, that's when you can come and follow him. So you see, we have a lot of closet cleaning to do. We need to get in and clean up our environment. Clean up the places where we hang out. Because a lot of the places you go, you can't bring that mentality into God's kingdom. Oh, I've been good at everything. I just go over here and, and do certain things every now and then. That's not good for the kingdom. That's those things that you'd rather do than follow God. That's the fun part. So there are things that we have in our repertoire, in our closets and under our beds that we can't take to Christ. So when we attempt or when we set out, because we don't want to attempt, we want to accomplish everything that we do because, again, we understand Christ and His Word. And He says that you can do all things through Him. You see, that's that... New Year's resolution, you you can't take that with you. Because uh, I didn't do it this year again. I was going to lose 15 pounds before June so I could get in my bathing suit and go to the beach. Honey, I gained 10 pounds. <laughs> I didn't make it. I can't do nothing. No, Jesus said, you can do all things through Christ. Amen. Because he's drinking. That's the, the difference, that mentality. You have to be 
acceptable to the Word of God. And that's what you can bring to the table, which is when you decide to be the best that you can be, that is what you have to dwell on. But before you decide that, you have to know where you come from. And you come from the creator of the universe. Yes. His DNA tells us that we are his children. So when you are the sons and the daughters of the king of kings, then you know what you need to do to be the best that you can be. Walk in his footsteps and obey his word. Amen. And then you don't have to tell anybody. Because when they see you coming, they say, Boy, there you come. Don't even look like a daddy. And every time one of us men hear that, oh, we just we perk up then. He yeah. looks just like me. All right then, I did that. <laughs> that is what Jesus wants to hear. To walk in his footsteps and listen to him and then you'll be like it. Because there is no visual identity in the spirit. It has to be in your action. You have to adopt the character of God in order to look like Him. You have to do what He does. That is in the image and likeness of God. And in order to be the best that you can be, that is what you have to do, is walk in the footsteps of Jesus. So I appeal to you this morning and ask you to make that decision today. This year, I want to be the best that I can be. And that's all you have. And in that frame of mind, then you will think on things that are above rather than things that are beneath. Never accept the fact that this book is the words of God. This is God speaking to you. This is God speaking to you. There's nothing else like this. Nothing else like this. This is just as good today as it was the day it was written. The theme don't change. The trend don't change. Everything that worked then works now. And 159 years from now, the trend will not change. The idea will be the same. Just like the song we were talking about, 10,000 years and forevermore. 10,000 years and forevermore, the theme will be the same. We can't change it. Not that we want to, but we can't change it. Ours is to adhere to it. Ours is to do it because it is God speaking. It's God speaking. So there's no other book like it. So this is what we need to devour to be the best that we can be. We have to hear what God is saying here and we have to listen to it. You see, you, you don't know it. You can't do it. I don't think any one of us in here could go out and build a 747. But we just don't know how. They give us all the parts and the tools and everything else. And we go out there and look at it and say, man, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> but you don't know what part goes where. We have to know the Word of God so that we can do it. And when we accomplish that, then we can be the best that we can be. But up until that point, we operate on what we have. I know where Smith says, but if I go in there and buy all of the ingredients, I don't know how to make a tuna casserole. I know to put the tuna in there, but after that, well, I can go get the stuff. I just don't know how to put it together. So I have to work with what I got. 
when I go and get all the ingredients for a tuna casserole, you know what I do? I get some relish and some eggs, <laughs> some mayonnaise, and I put the tuna in there with all that, and then I make a tuna salad. <laughs> I'm working with what I got. And see, I'm just as cool as if I had the tuna casserole. <laughs> That's what we do. We work with what we got, what we continue to dig. And that's the way we can be the best that we can be, is to just keep working at it, keep studying, keep reaching, keep seeking. And God will not let you down. If you seek, you shall find. Amen. But it's up to you. So I hope I haven't <laughs> discouraged anybody. <laughs> New Year's resolutions is bad for you. 